Hey guys, this is Vincent. Um, this isn't really a tutorial so much as a quick overview to give you kind of a high level idea of what's going on with this thing. A couple of people asked for a tutorial explaining how the Joystick 2 object works in Fusion. And uh, guess what? It's a little bit more complicated than the Xbox object. The prior tutorial used the uh, Xbox gamepad object because, well, it's basically the entry level controller object. It makes the most sense at a glance. To kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, I've gone ahead and rigged up a display to show you all of the buttons that I'm going to be pushing while I'm playing with my gamepad to give you an idea of both what I'm actually doing and what Fusion can see through the Joystick 2 object. So here, go ahead and have a look at this window. And I've got my Logitech uh, gamepad here. It's X input compatible and what that means is it basically works the same way and speaks the same language as say an Xbox 360 controller. So that's why it was perfect for using with the Xbox object, the Xbox controller object in the previous tutorial. So let's have a look here. You can see that as I'm pushing buttons, this is one of the things that Joystick 2 supports. Uh, it'll let you display which button was the last button that you pushed. So we can cycle through the face buttons and get different values. And you can see on the screen as I'm pushing the different face buttons, it's showing the display of what I'm actually doing. Uh, in case you're curious, this little Xbox uh, controller display is not part of Fusion. I didn't write this myself. This is actually a web-based tool that I've just overlaid on the window so you'll see what's going on. Um, but yeah, so here's a couple of things. The Joystick 2 object is cool in that it can give you stick direction. So instead of working with raw numbers, you can get uh, a numeric direction from 0 to 359. The problem is that once you've got it set up with its default stuff, if you just drop it into your project, you're not going to get the kind of consistent results you're going to expect. So look at what I've got going on here and you'll see what I mean. So on the right stick, we start at down and we move counterclockwise around to go up in value. But on the left stick, we start at right and we go counterclockwise around to go up in value. And then it considers the D-pad to be a POV hat, like the little, the little toggle that you can use on top of like a full-size flight stick. So what it, what that comes out is that it'll also return direction, uh, but you know, since it only has a limited number of directions, you can only get very specific values. It's also not consistent with the others, if you notice. Right stick, zero is down. Uh, left stick, what was it, zero is right. POV hat, zero is up. So you're gonna have to translate these into numbers that make sense within your project if you wanna use the raw input from joystick two. On top of that, uh, a problem with the X, X input controllers in general is that L2 and R2 back here aren't actually buttons. They're kind of like an analog stick in of themselves. They share an axis. So if you look at the Z value on the screen, as I pull the right trigger, it goes down to negative 995. If I pull the left trigger, it goes up to positive 995. So you can do a comparison on this value to see whether or not the trigger is down. The inherent problem in this, and you're gonna be dealing with this regardless if you're using controllers like this. You can't, you can't code this away. It's a hardware limitation. If you hold down both, you get zero. So if you hold down both, you're doing neither. So that's not super helpful for you. So when you're planning the controls for your game, if you want to use gamepad controls, my advice is to stay far, far away from anything that would require the player to hit both uh, the R2 and the L2 triggers at the same time, because that's just not going to work. Okay, so what does Joystick 2 offer you that's actually worthwhile? Because Obviously, a lot of this doesn't make sense. I mean, you can set up with whatever joystick, whatever gamepad you're using, you can set up something like this that feeds the last pushed button into a counter so you can see what that value is, which is great. But you can also bring up the Windows Joypad Diagnostic window, and it's got everything laid out for you in a way that you can see. So again, you can see that the Z-axis is the R2 and L2 triggers, 
and if you do both of them, you just get stuck in the middle. Um, the left stick is actually a stick, as you'd expect. The right stick is actually rotation. So it's mapped to rotation, and rotation in this regard, as I understand it, would be, say you had a flight stick and you were holding it, and you were turning it left and right, not tilting it forward and back, but turning it in your hand. That would be rotation. So that's what the right stick is mapped to uh, in Windows. And again, the POV hat is the D-pad, so that's going to go around and just have the very limited number of directions. Also, don't forget about... Um, L3 and R3, clicking in the clicking in uh, the joysticks, that's pretty handy. So you want to keep that in mind. You might be able to use that for something. But so one of the things that Joystick 2 does well is that uh, it can handle a really large number of buttons. If for some reason you wanted to have a game that used some kind of incredibly elaborate controller, say you had an adapter and you wanted to use your Steel Battalion Xbox controller to play your Fusion game, uh, Joystick 2 could handle that. You'd have to set up a diagnostic screen, kind of like the one I've got here, or look at it in uh, the Windows diagnostic and see what those face buttons are numbered because you don't know what they are otherwise. It's not going to list them as A, B, X, Y, or triangle or square or anything like that. Uh, the other fun thing you can do is that Joystick 2, to a certain extent, supports remappable controls, which is something that everybody's obviously excited about. Because when you go to create an event for when I push down a button using the Joystick 2 object, it doesn't just have hard-coded button 1, button 2, button 3, you get into the expression editor and you can tell it what button you want based on math. So, uh, for example, the diagnostic window that I've got set up here that has last button pressed, that's a function that it can do where it just gives you the value of whatever the last button you pushed was. So you could set up something for the player where it would set that number to a variable. And then when you went to go call uh, a function for a specific ability, like an attack or something, you could reference that variable instead of just handing it a number, letting the, con letting the player set whatever controls they want on the gamepad, which is pretty cool. So what this really is, is a lesson in what is and isn't your problem. Uh, Joystick 2 is pretty complex. There's a lot going on here. Uh, you can get the raw values from all these controls. You can get tilt. Uh, so you can have tilt percentage in addition to um, a degree value, which you may have to convert. And, uh, and Joystick 2 can handle quite a number of different kinds of controllers, depending on the work you want to put in. If you set up if you check it with one of these diagnostic screens and figure out what the buttons are, you can have it do whatever you want, more or less. Uh, but there's a lot of work to get it to, to settle into place. You've got to do all those conversions I talked about if you want it to be consistent and make sense when you're actually writing stuff for it. But you don't need to do this. This is a solved problem. Uh, there's a sort of tool, I guess it's a, it's a project template for Fusion created by the developer of Sprike. Um, Volniskra, I think, is how you pronounce his, uh, his handle. It's called Vaccine. I'll get, uh, Taco to put a link to it in the doodad down there so you can actually go grab it real quick. But it's just a download, it's a download from his site. It's, uh, an MFA file, if I remember right. Basically, the next time you want to wind up a project that's going to use a controller and going to take more advantage of it than just the face buttons and the directions, if you want to use the analog sticks and you want everybody to be able to use whatever controller they bring to the game be that a ps4 controller or uh some sort of weird usb adapted ps2 controller or xbox controllers or original xbox controllers or any number of logitech controllers all of that it's fine he's already worked that out for you it does it for you don't don't wrestle with this yourself save the time so it's here, here's what you do you go to the download page you grab it the next time you want to start one of these programs you open that and you can go in and use that as your base. The project that he he's handing out is just um, the controller functionality and a admittedly a little bit over the top debug setup. Uh, the debug the debug setup is set up in frames on top of the project, 
the thing is you can just if if this intimidates you when you're looking at it you can just delete the debug stuff and just close down all of the tools all of the uh all the event groups for the, the controller stuff so you don't even have to see it it'll just point everything to input values that you can reference like i've told you to do in the previous tutorial so that you don't have to understand how it works and it'll do all that work for you already He's given it out for free. Leverage these tools. Let him save you the time. He's a great guy. Join us in Discord if you have any questions or if you have any trouble getting the thing running. I'll personally walk you through it if you really, really need it that bad. Um, make sure to hang around. There's probably going to be more tutorials uh, coming down the pipe, and a lot of them are going to be more nitty-gritty as opposed to this one, which is basically just advice. So, take care. Get subscribed if you're not, and have a good day.